Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, we have some truly shocking and intense stories of parents who took justice into their own hands. These are not just tales of anger and retribution, they are complex emotional journeys that highlight the lengths to which a parent will go to protect their child. We'll explore four gripping cases that made headlines and left lasting impacts. From Baton Rouge to Daytona, and from Bonita Lynn Vela, these parents faced unimaginable situations that pushed them to their limits. Each case is unique, but they all share one common thread, the fierce, unrelenting love of a parent for their child. Prepare yourself for a roller coaster of emotions as we uncover these harrowing tales of parental justice. Let's get started. Our first story takes us back to the sweltering summer of 1984 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Gary Plosh, a father like any other, was about to become a central figure in one of the most shocking cases of vigilantism ever caught on camera. Gary's son, Jody Plosh, had been kidnapped and sexually assaulted by a man named Jeffrey Doucet. The pain and anguish that Gary felt were unimaginable. As the authorities tracked down Doucet and brought him back to Baton Rouge for trial, Gary was plotting his own form of justice. On March 16, 1984, as Doucet was being escorted through the Baton Rouge airport, I stood by a bank of payphones, wearing a baseball cap pulled low over my eyes. With a hidden camera rolling, I pulled out a revolver and shot Doucet in the head. The footage captured the entire shocking event and it quickly became a media sensation. But what drove Gary to such an extreme act? In interviews, Gary has said that he wanted to make sure Doucet could never hurt another child again. He believed that the justice system wouldn't deliver the punishment Doucet deserved. And so, he took matters into his own hands, becoming both a hero and a criminal in the eyes of the public. The court case that followed was equally dramatic. Gary was charged with manslaughter, but his defense argued that he had acted out of temporary insanity due to the trauma his family had endured. The jury was sympathetic. They saw a father pushed to the brink. In the end, Gary received a seven-year suspended sentence and five years of probation, along with 300 hours of community service. This case left many questions in its wake. Was Gary a vigilante hero or a cold-blooded murderer? Did he achieve justice for his son, or did he undermine the rule of law? These are questions that continue to be debated to this day. What is clear, however, is the depth of a father's love and the lengths to which he would go to protect his child. Now let's move on to our next story, which takes us to Daytona, where another father faced a similarly harrowing situation. Our next story brings us to the sunny shores of Daytona, Florida, where Jason Browning found himself in a situation no parent ever wants to face. It was the summer of 2014 when Jason discovered that his young son had been abused by the family babysitter, Raymond Frolander. The horror and rage that filled Jason's heart were indescribable. Raymond Frolander was a trusted family friend, someone I had known for years. The betrayal was deep, and the pain was unbearable. When I walked in on Frolander abusing my son, I didn't hesitate. I attacked Frolander, beating him severely before calling the police. The 911 call, which was later released to the public, captured Jason's raw emotion as he told the dispatcher what had happened. When the police arrived, they found Frolander unconscious and covered in blood. Jason didn't deny what he had done. In fact, he admitted it openly. My son is my life and you fed with my life. It was a moment of pure, unfiltered rage from a father who had reached his breaking point. As the case went to trial, Jason's actions were scrutinized. Some saw him as a hero, a father who had done what any parent would do to protect their child. Others saw him as a vigilante who had taken the law into his own hands. The legal system had to balance these perspectives as they decided Jason's fate. In the end, Jason was not charged with a crime. The authorities determined that his actions were a direct response to witnessing the abuse of his son. Raymond Frolander, on the other hand, was sentenced to 25 years in prison for his heinous crimes. Justice was served, but the emotional scars for Jason and his family would remain. So, what do you think? Was Jason justified in his actions or did he cross a line? Let us know in the comments below. Now let's move on to our next story which takes us to Indiana, where Benita Lynn Vela made a drastic decision to protect her son. Our third story takes us to the quiet town of Franklin, Indiana in 2013, where Benita Lynn Vela faced a nightmare that no parent should ever have to endure. When she discovered that her son had been molested by a close family friend, 
she was consumed by a rage that drove her to take extreme measures. Bonita Lynn Vela, the assailant, a young man named Robert Gonzalez, had betrayed the trust of my family in the worst way imaginable. The emotional toll on me was immense, and I felt that the justice system would not adequately punish Gonzalez for his heinous crime. In a moment of desperation Benita decided to take matters into her own hands. On a cold December night she confronted Gonzalez at her home. She held him captive, interrogating him about the abuse. The situation escalated quickly as her fury took over. Armed with a box cutter, Bonita threatened Gonzalez demanding that he confess to his crimes. In a shocking turn of events she took the blade and cut Gonzalez's genitals. Bonita Lynn Vela. The aftermath was chaotic. Gonzalez was rushed to the hospital where he received medical treatment for his injuries. I was arrested and charged with several crimes including battery and criminal confinement. The case garnered national attention, sparking intense debates about the limits of parental justice. Benita's defense argued that she had acted out of temporary insanity, driven by the trauma of her son's abuse. They claimed that her actions, while extreme, were a direct result of the emotional distress she had experienced. The prosecution, however, painted her as a dangerous vigilante who had taken the law into her own hands. Benita Lynn Vela. So what do you think? Was I justified in my actions or did I go too far? Let us know in the comments below. Now let's move on to our final story which takes us to Mexico where Eduardo Gallo faced a similarly harrowing situation.